Uh, I'm Karan Wahi. I'm a computer scientist at University of Southern California, and I'm here to talk about workflows in context of a workflow management system called Pegasus. So the past two days, we've heard a lot about workflows in general, emphasis of NERSC 10 on workflows. So just a quick primer on what are scientific workflows. So essentially, they conduct a CD, allow a user to conduct a series of computational tasks. So you can have a pipeline of a set of different codes, connect them together as a workflow. So the chain allows, uh, it replaces manual handoffs, outputs become inputs to subsequent tasks. There is a ease of use uh, component, and there is a possibility of giving non-developers access to sophisticated codes. Uh, essentially, workflows are becoming popular to define common formats or standards when useful. And there are also multidisciplinary workflows, for example, in the MMA community, which is multi-messenger astronomy, where people are trying to connect workflows to micros, uh, 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 detections. So at its essence, workflows are fairly simple constructs. So, you know, a single job can be viewed as a workflow. You can have a series of jobs that create some outputs and then they, those outputs need to be processed. Or you have a traditional large data set that gets split into smaller data sets to enable parallel processing. And using these simple constructs, you can create large DAG based workflows. So when you think about workflows, there are certain challenges which are common across various scientific domains. So one is like, how do you describe your workflows in a very simple way? Uh, how do you access distributed and heterogeneous data and resources? So you know, if you're thinking about workflows, you want to exploit some parallelism in the structure of your pipeline, how do you do that? And then there is this cardinal thing of you know, resources keep on being changing, they keep on upgrading, and, you know, as an end user or a scientist, do you want to be responsible on how to figure out the transition from Cori to Pearl Muto, for example? And then there's a component of ease of use. So, you know, you can easily create large workflows, but how can you debug and monitor the execution of these large workflows? Uh, so within Pegasus, our focus has always been on a clear separation between a workflow description and a workflow execution. So users describe their workflows in a high-level portable format. Uh, there's a concept of workflow planning, which takes your workflow description and compiles it to your target execution environment. We'll go a bit into detail a bit later. Uh, we also focus a lot on task uh, execution, making sure that we get runtime provenance data from your task so that we can present it to you as a, a, a via a variety of uh, command line tools or a web-based dashboard. And then we've also been recently working on making sure that data doesn't get corrupted when workflows are executed. Because if you're running workflows on distributed infrastructure, there's a lot of data movement involved. So Pegasus is a NSF funded project since 2001, which is developed in cl close collaboration with the, with the HT Condor team. It automates complex multi-stage processing pipelines. A key benefit of Pegasus is that it automatically does your data management, does all the data transfers that are required for your workflow. The descriptions in which you describe your workflows are reusable, which aids in reproducibility. We do record how your data was produced, and we have retries built in the system so that you know a job failure doesn't trigger a workflow failure without retries. And we uh, ensure data integrity during workflow execution. So I'll give a, give a brief overview of the various applications that have been using Pegasus. So we have the Southern Cali California Earthquake Center, uh, SCEC. Some of you may know about it. So they do these large scale simulations and try to build a hazard map of the Southern California region. Now they've been funded to do the map of the whole California region where they're trying to come up with a hazard map that tells or gives you an idea of the risk if a workflow happens on a particular fault. So these workflows are a mix of MPI and single code jobs 
And the SCID uses uh, Pegasus to usually run either on Exceed or DOE resources such as Summit at Oak Ridge. We also have uh, LIGO, which a lot of you would have known. They don't run MPI-based workflows. Instead, LIGO's computing workflow is more high throughput computing oriented. And uh, one of the main pipelines in the LIGO search detection, which is the PyCVC pipeline, is exclusively run, th run through Pegasus. And LIGO ends up running their pipelines on Open Science Grid, which is a distributed computing infrastructure uh, consisting of about of 68 sites uh, spread over Europe and the United States. Um, and then recently, you know, we have Xenon NT, which is a dark matter search where they run workflows. They're, they end up using Rusio for data management, but the data gets retrieved by Pegasus. And then they have a MongoDB instance where they track science runs and data products. So I won't go too much into detail about the SCEC, but you know, the key point here, which I wanted to emphasize is like SCEC has used Pegasus to run across the UAE sites for their large scale cyber shake runs. So in the past they have run, they've spread their competitions over Titan and Blue Waters. Now in the recent past, they've been uh, exclusively doing their runs on Summit and then on local USC computing resources. Uh, so the Event Horizon Telescope team based at uh, University of Arizona also uses Pegasus where you know, their data products are stored in cybers and they end up running pipelines which run about 1,000 jobs in parallel at the same time on Open Science Grid using Pegasus. And the limitation is just like how how can you, how fast can you retrieve from cybers and what's the parallelism supported at the data store end? And uh, the workflow size is usually between 50,000 and 100,000 jobs, like a single workflow that uh, EHT runs. And then in the past couple of years, we've also worked with the computing group on USC main campus where USC took uh, uh, got these two electron microscopes as part of the cryo EM facility. And here, Pegasus is used to do the pre-processing of the data that comes off of the cryo uh, EM microscopes and the computations for the um, uh, processing happen on the local GPU cluster at USC. And in this case, like, you know, the workflows get spawned automatically. There is a thin layer between Pegasus and the microscope, a service that detects incoming data and launches workflows every uh, N uh, units of time. So some basic concepts about Pegasus. So Pegasus itself consists, you can think of what three main components. So there's the high level Pegasus piece, which is called the Pegasus Planner. You can think of it as a mapper. That's what you interface with as a user. And Pegasus takes workflows, generates them as Condor Dagman workflows. So Condor Dagman is our workflow executor. And what Dagman does is it ensures that jobs are released in order. So if all the parents have run successfully, a node is released. The job gets released to a local Condor queue, which is managed by Condor. And from there, jobs get submitted by Condor to various schedulers, or they can also be run in a pure native Condor environment. So for example, in Perlmutter, we end up using Condor to submit jobs to Slow. Uh, workflows in Pegasus are DAGs. So what that means is the nodes in the description are jobs. Edges are dependencies. Dependencies can be both control flow and data flow. Uh, we don't support while loops and conditional branches out of uh, the box because of the DAG semantics, but using recursion, there are ways to support uh, loops and uh, if conditions. Jobs are standalone executables. So from a Pegasus perspective, any Linux executable that needs to be invoked can be a job. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, planning occurs ahead of execution. And you can think of the Pegasus planner as a workflow compiler. It 
it's taking this high level description of your workflow and generating an executable workflow that can actually be run on a resource. So what do we mean by this compilation process? So on the left, I have a schematic of like a input, uh, a sample input workflow that you might describe to Pegasus, where you know this description is very similar to how you would describe your pipeline to your colleague on a whiteboard. So you would specify what jobs make up your pipeline, and for each job, you specify okay, these are the input data sets or the output data sets that each job requires. And you will refer to the jobs with logical identifiers to identify what executable needs to be involved. Similarly, for the uh, data sets. So you describe them with logical identifiers. Most often, they are just the base names of the files. And this separation, what it allows you is, allows you to describe a workflow which is independent of the resource you're going to run on. So this high level description just has logical identifiers about your pipeline and when you give it to Pegasus and you say, uh, you know, run this workflow, for example, on this particular slow cluster, Pegasus will figure out where your data sets reside. So, you know, to run a workflow, you do need some raw input data sets. So it will look up a replica catalog, which is a data catalog, which will tell you Pegasus, okay, this is where the data sets reside. Pegasus will automatically annotate the DAG and add data stage in node to automatically transfer in the data. As the jobs execute, you know, data stage out jobs get added, which will stage the data out to a server of your location. And also one powerful feature of Pegasus is we add data cleanup nodes in, in the workflow. So your data gets cleaned up from the scratch space when it's no longer used. So as a user, you don't need to worry about cleaning up the data once your workflows are done. You can do it automatically while your workflow is running. Uh, so to generate these abstract uh, workflows, Pegasus has uh, workflow generation APIs uh, in Python, Java, and R. Most of our users use our Python API. So we released a brand new Python 3 based API. I have a small snippet of the API. It's a very intuitive, easy to use API that generates abstract workflows. The, all the catalog formats and the workflow formats internally in Pegasus are YAML form formatted, but you just use the API to generate the workflow description. Uh, so one thing which I'll briefly touch is about data staging configurations, right? So a lot of times, like for example, the traditional HPC, people who are using traditional HPC resources, they have a gap in trying to migrate their competitions to distributed infrastructures such as the open science grid. And primarily that stems from the fact that people gen code their pipelines with the shared file system dependency in mind. So within Pegasus, because there's a clear decoupling of your portable description and how your workflow that gets executed. We allow our users to choose what data configuration you want to run your workflows with. So, you know, I'll go bottom up. So, like if you're trying to run on Perlmutter, you could use the shared file system where like the intermediate data gets written out. Or if you're trying to run on Open Science Grid or let's say in Amazon Cloud, you will not set up a shared file system. Instead, you will let tell Pegasus to use either a S3 bucket to store your intermediate data products, or you can uh, <clears throat> use data servers such as a grid FTP server, Globus Online, to be an intermediate uh, staging area for your product, uh, data products. And then the default configuration in Pegasus, which we refer to as Condor IO, is a non-shared file system configuration where Condor takes care of all the data transfers. So again, there's no dependence on the shared file system there. So how does a Pegasus deployment in general look like to a user? So for a user, you know, they have a concept of a workflow submit node. So that's where you submit your workflows from. In case of Perlmutter, it could be one of the login nodes. So the workflow submit node has Pegasus and HT Condor installed. And again, I would reiterate, Condor is not replacing Slurm. If you are running on NERSC resources, it's just a broker to submit to Slurm. And you tell Pegasus that, you know, I, I have a workflow that I want to run. 
my data sets are distributed over some data sites which are annotated with what servers you, where the, your data products are and I want to run my workflow on one or more compute sites each compute site could be a HPC cluster or it could be a distributed infrastructure such as open science grid or a, a cloud resource such as uh, you know Amazon and then we have this notion of a data staging site which coordinates data movement for the workflow and that's where the flexibility comes in Pegasus if you're running in a shared file system Pegasus can assume this data staging site to be the shared file system if you're running in Amazon Pegasus will assume this data staging site to be a S3 bucket for example and then the output site is where you want your output to be uh, placed so you know as a user you will say I want to run a workflow on these sites and get data from these particular sites and place my outputs on these, this end site. So at NERSC, you know what, how, if you are interested in trying out Pegasus, what are the various options available? So, you know, we've done some recent work um, in the past year where we've been more looking at the NERSC 10 uh, deployment scenarios where we've uh, developed a container which users can bring up in the NERSC spin cluster and that will uh, bring you up a fully configured workflow submit node that has Pegasus and Condor configured to submit jobs to Perlmutter. Uh, the link to the GitHub repo is here. I won't go into the spin details since like you all are aware of spin so I won't preach to the crowd there. So uh, you know, in I'll just give a quick overview of what happens. So as I said, you know, in the spin, spin cluster, you, sum, you spin up a workflow submit node, and then what we are using is we are um, launching from the workflow submit nodes, we launch pilot jobs against Perlmutter, and that ends up spinning up a Condor pool on the fly. So the pilots report back to HT Condor collector daemon, which is running in your container. And we use a load balancer to connect the ports. So this is just done automatically during your spin cluster setup time. Uh, we have detailed instructions in the GitHub readme below. And once this whole setup is set, set up, you can just submit your workflows uh, against uh, the pilot jobs that are running on Perlmutter. So we have some detailed instructions. I just wanted to give a shout out to Corey who helped me get my, my head around the spin concepts when I was exploring how to do the setup. Yeah, I'm almost done. And then, you know, there is also another option where, you know, you want to just download Pegasus and Condor yourself. Let's say you want to run it directly on the login node and in that case, Pegasus will submit jobs directly to Slurm. There are no pilots involved in there. So this is an approach which, if you are interested in uh, exploring, is an option. Uh, within NERSC, we have Nick Tyler, who is familiar with this approach and who has been <clears throat> working on getting Condor running in user space, mainly for JGI. But the same setup will help if you want to try running uh, uh, Pegasus also. And another thing that I wanted to point out, like if you decide to use Pegasus, it's just not restricted to DOE resources. I've mentioned Open Science Grid. I also wanted to mention Access. So Access is the new name for Exceed, which is NSF's supercomputing effort. So Pegasus is part of Access support strategy. It's supposed to be used as a tier one tool, self-serving, to the end users along with open on demand where we have training materials and there's a central access Pegasus host that allows you to submit workflow to SDSC expands, Purdue Anvil, ESC Bridges, or Tax Stampede 2. All these are again like uh, supercomputing resources but funded by NSF not DOE. And this setup is very similar to the setup which I've prepared in SPIN. So even in Access Pegasus, people use this Condor tool called HT Condor Annex to provision pilots against HPC resources, and that's what we are leveraging in the spin deployment. 
So if you're interested in knowing more about Pegasus, uh, you know, Pegasus website has a lot of information. We have a user's mailing list. Uh, you can send uh, support private emails to a support list. And in the recent past, a lot of users sign up to our user Slack to get, start, uh, get started and help. Uh, we have of online office hours, and we do have a YouTube channel where we upload recent talks, and there also we have a Pegasus in five minute introduction for people who want to try. And on the Pegasus website, last thing which I would say is that we do have a tutorial available which allows you to just download a Docker container and compose a simple workflow and run it. So, you know, if you just want to get a flavor of Pegasus basic and start playing around with it, I would recommend doing the tutorial on your laptop to get started. Um, thank you very much, and I hope I'm on time and happy to take some questions. How you need in the yeah, so, so right now for the pilots, <clears throat> so the tool which I was referring to, HT Condor Annex, so once you submit a workflow, you launch the tool and you tell how many pilots it needs to launch, how many nodes it needs to configure. So as the, pilot, as the jo uh, pilots report back, your, your workflow starts running on there. So what the tool and Condor does is this auto expiry of pilots. So, you know, there's inactivity if the pilots are idle more than set amount of time, which usually is like 20 to 30 minutes, uh, the Condor will kill the pilots for you automatically to prevent usage. But, you know, in our group on the research aspect, we, our PhD students have explored trying to estimate how many resources a particular workflow would require upfront, but that's not really integrated into the mainstream thing. So, but this too, you know, from an end user's perspective does get you a, a large way forward where, you know, the launching the pilots against Perlmutter is just one command line tool. It just connects it back and then the expiry takes care that there's no uh, resources. And you can run, <clears throat> <laughs> the way the setup is you launch pilots and you can run multiple workflows on those pilots, right? So there's that decoupling also. So it's not that for every workflow you need to launch a pilot. I can see there is a question in the QA. Yeah, this one's from before. So um, are there plans on supporting workflow creation slash execution via REST API? So that's a good question. So right now within Pegasus, our monitoring layer, because I didn't talk about the Pegasus uh, web dashboard. So we do have a dashboard, which since I didn't have enough time, that pre presents all this debugging information to the user. So it's a drill down and that's based on our REST API. So in the Pegasus documentation, you will find references to the REST API for getting them all the monitoring information about the workflows, the jobs, the status, the whole shebang. But that's just like the get aspect of it. So we've talked about supporting a REST API to submit workflows. In the past, we've worked with the Tapis group at TAG, but we haven't really done a native solution ourselves yet. Great.